guys, 3.1. So exploring the polynomial functions. Exploring polynomial functions. Okay, so we're looking at a polynomial when you're doing expressions as opposed to equations. So expressions don't have an equal sign in it, uh, whereas an equation has an equal sign. So we're doing a polynomial expression. Okay, it contains usually, contains, sorry, it contains only one variable, usually it's x. Okay, and usually in, in descending order, so something like 3x squared plus 3x, Okay, would be one of the examples. So you could have, I don't know, x to the power of three minus five. Various different examples you could have. So you could have quadratic, linear, but just expressions only. Okay, um, there is never, there's no square roots. There's no fractions. square roots, no fractions, and when I mean square roots, so none of this, and when I mean fractions, something like, uh, say this. Okay, so no square roots, no function, uh, no square roots, no fractions, etc. Uh, so these all have x's, but um, those are special types of equations or expressions. We just want polynomial expressions, uh, each one letter, descending order, to the exponents. Okay, uh, then we have polynomial functions um, have the following properties. The nth finite differences of the degrees are constants. I'll explain what these are. Uh, the domain is always xer for polynomial functions. The range could be yer or there could be restrictions, just like a quadratic has the restrictions on the on the range. Okay, so usually has a maximum or minimum value, or we say upper or lower bounds. But not both, and there's never any asymptotes. Okay, so I'm just gonna scroll down and just draw them out. Okay, so a linear function you've been taught in grade nine. So a linear function, um, just straight line, um, continuous both ways. Okay, and it can be a positive. Uh, or it could be a negative. Okay, so both would be linear. Quadratic. Okay, so we know quadratic again, and the parent function, something like this, makes a parabola. Okay, and we can stretch, compress it, move it left, right, and such, and we can reflect it. Okay, so quadratic line with positive, negative, or, uh, sorry, linear, positive, negative, quadratic, same thing, positive, and then negative. Okay, then you were the soils grade 9, grade 10, and then grade 11, you were introduced to cubic, so cubic function. So in its parent function, this just kind of looks like a snake. It bends through where the origin is, and then once again, so it increases your increases both where it keeps going each way. It's continuous. Uh, X E R as a domain, Y E R as a range because it continues both ways. Okay, but a cubic function could um, get stretched and compressed. So a cubic function could look something like this. Okay, so where it has not just a slight bend, but it has an actual. This is called a local maximum and local minimum. We'll go learn that later in the chapter. Okay, so we bends um, get more pronounced. Okay, then we could also have a cubic function go in the other direction. Okay, so this would be a negative one. Okay, this gets reflected. Okay, then we have a quartic function. So this is brand new. So you did linear grade nine, grade 10, grade 11, and now grade 12, we're going from four onwards. Okay, so quartic, so it's the fourth degree. So let's do it. So this is y equals x, the function, uh, or f of x equals x. This is y equals x squared. Then we have y equals x cubed. Now this is y equals x to the power of four, which is the quartic function. 
In its very basic function, uh, it looks like a parabola. Okay, so it just looks like a quadratic in its basic form, in its parent function. Um, just that, it looks exactly like the one above it. Actually, it grows quite rapidly, so maybe even thinner, because it's power of four now, so it's increasing faster than it would for a quadratic. So I'd do a little bit thinner for the quartic function. Okay, but if we stretch and compress it, um, it could look like different different shapes, or if we add more terms to the equation, so we can get something um, that looks like this, that looks something like a W. Okay, so if we add, sorry, not stretch and compress, but if we add more terms to this, so like a plus x squared plus 2, something like that, we could then have these bends within the, within the graph itself, and we can have local maximum and minimums. Okay, so it is a very basic form. It looks like a quadratic, but then we can have bends. Okay, and lastly is a quintic function. Quintic function. So that would be the power of five. Quintic is the power of five. Okay, and again, if you guess it correctly, it looks like a cubic function. Okay, but since it's power of five, it grows rapidly. So maybe a little bit uh, closer to the lines, whereas this one, maybe it could be a little bit wider. Okay, this one would be a little bit more thinner because it's growing rapidly because of the power of five as opposed to the power of three. But once again, if we add more terms to the equation, uh, then we could get something that looks something like this. Okay, it kind of looks like a snake. I don't know if you guys could see that with the glare. So, so something like, as such. Okay, that's uh, pretty much the whole lesson. Uh, there's nothing else I want to add to it. Homework there, page 127, 1, 2, 3, 7, 8. So it should be a fairly, or it should be an easy homework for you guys. Um, but again, if you have any questions, uh, you can see me at, in the afternoon and we can take anything up. All right, take care. Bye.